Okay, I guess it's time for a new opening uh, video, um, and this time I've chosen a um, an opening that's pretty popular on the club level. Um, it can be pretty uh, provocative in terms of allowing your opponent to gain a lot of space. This is the Alekian's defense, named after the former uh, world champion. Uh, starts with the moves uh, e to e4 and knight to, to f6, uh, threatening this central pawn, forcing white to make a decision uh, whether to, to push the pawn forward or, of course, to support it with the knight to, to c3 or uh, a pawn move like d3. I'm not going to cover those two last moves. Uh, they are too passive and allows like a, a, a good game, for example, knight c3, uh, d5. Is completely fine. You can also transpose to a an obscure Sicilian or go to a, an open game kind of position with with e7 e5. But uh, but d5 is is the best move. Um, now e5 is White's uh, preferred move uh, in this position. And now you can of course play the very provocative knight g8. It has his points though. Just saying that. Okay, uh, I lost a couple of moves with my knight, but but this pawn is overextended, and uh, I'm gonna attempt to um, to put some pressure on on your center uh, and, and your pawn on e5 by d6, uh, knight c6 moves like that. But of course, it doesn't lead to a great game for black. But I think it's uh, playable on club level at least. But uh, of course, knight d5 is is our move. Um, there are some alternatives for white here. Um, in this video, I'm going to cover the three uh, most normal or um, most popular variations uh, for white, and I think three variations that's very good to know if you're um, if you're going to play the Alekian's defense with with the black pieces. And those are the uh, the four pawns attack, which we are going to start with the modern defense, and of course the exchange variation, which I think is the most uh, most common. Uh, Variation. Um, I think you'll face that more often than not. So, but uh, in terms of opening strategy, this uh, might look like a, a slightly passive opening. I mean, d4 is White's move now. d6 will have this position quite often in the Alekin's defense, um, and it might look passive for us. Um, I'm going to start with uh, c4 and I'll look into the four pawn uh, four pawns attack. Knight b6 f4. So. This looks mighty uh, for for white. Very impressive. Four pawns in the center already. Uh, chased our knight uh, all around the board, and we've only uh, developed one knight and, and moved one pawn. So it doesn't look very good for black. But even though we've given white a lot of space uh, to start uh, start off with, uh, we have the opportunity to counterattack against the center, much like in the Grunfeld defense, for example. Um, so this is an opening that's um, coined on many of the same principles behind the Greenfield defense and many other um, hyper-modern openings. So a, a traditional chess player would think that um, the space advantage for white here is, is too much, it's too good for white, but if we are... Um, if you are sharp enough and ready to counterattack at the appropriate moment, at the opportune moment later on in the game, then this can be quite advantageous for, for black. So we'll see how this can develop. Uh, first, I'm just going to mention that DE5 is, of course, the the most natural and, and best move for black. We want to open up for a queen and put some pressure on, on this pawn after FE and then continue with knight C6. This is the black's main strategy in the Alekin's defense. Put pressure on uh, your opponent's uh, center for some concession uh, and, and play on the dark squares. That's that's very often uh, the strategy. Break up the center, put some pressure um, on your opponent's center. Um, there is an alternative though here and that uh, it's quite interesting and that's g5, um, which might look uh, a bit too obscure, a bit too dangerous, but it has its points definitely. Just breaking up the center, uh, attacking all of white's uh, central pawns here. Maybe even c5 or knight c6 will will, uh, will be played. Uh, I think knight c3 is white's best move here, just to do, uh, be ready to capture on f4 with, with the bishop. But if white gets too greedy, then fg, d5, 
couple of exchanges and, and these pawns are just way too weak. Uh, the king is in the center and black will have an enormous initiative after a queenside castle. I think the computer evaluates this as quite favorable for black, so this is not something white should consider. Um, so d e f e knight c six. Now, if knight f three, this is a slight inaccuracy. Uh, not not a mistake per se, but uh, it's inaccurate because it allows black to play bishop b a g four uh, in one move, which of course again um, adds pressure to the uh, center, white center. And very often black will continue, for example, with queenside castles or a quick f six uh, to to break up the center and to add some pressure against the d four pawn. So e six. Uh, bishop e7, uh, short castle, f6 is is uh, is more than fine. Um, if you are feeling adventurous, then of course queenside castle is also okay. Bishop e3 is the main move here. We will continue with bishop f5, perhaps queenside castles, perhaps e6, bishop e7, castles, f6. A um, couple of ways to play this. Uh, for example, e6, bishop b4, castles, and then f6. Two plans, two, two ways of playing the, the position of the black. White uh, wants to consolidate the center, of course, and if black is unable to put pressure on the center, or if black uh, plays too passive in the Anakin's defense, then the white can just roll over black with the center eventually. So this is something black needs to take into consideration when playing such a slightly passive opening, but of course you have to you have to uh, be ready for the counterattack when giving white so much space, because uh, if you do nothing, then the space will count for for something, definitely, um, eventually. So uh, just watch out for, for that. Um, so in this position, white could play the four pounds attack. We, we just looked at this, but the more common option is the exchange variation E, D6. Now, um, before recapturing on d6, you have to um, just think about your, your strategy in the game. Um, do you want to play a more unbalanced, attacking, sharp position? Um, then c, d6 is definitely um, the, the way to go. And I can just show you knight c3, g6. You want to uh, fianchetto your bishop, again, to put pressure on uh, your opponent's center. Now, this uh, opening strategy for white, these moves, bishop b3, rook c1 is to consolidate the central pawns, follow up with a quick b3. If white doesn't do this, then these pawns might come under fire. Uh, so this is actually quite modern and pretty pretty smart for, uh, for white to do. Cancels, b3. There's no rush with these pieces yet, at least. And e5. You could start with knight c6, but e5, and that's uh, basically black strategy in, in the position. You want to force some decision from white in the center. I mean, if, uh, if white takes, then uh, we can recapture and enjoy uh, a pawn majority here. Um, and if white doesn't uh, capture, plays d5, for example, then again f5 and some uh, control over the dark squares, such as uh, c5 and, and d4 is advantageous for black. So, so um, Definitely a position and variation that will give great imbalance and a lot of action to, to the game. Um, it's not uh, good for black, but it's playable, uh, absolutely. Um, it's rare that any opening gives black any advantage, so white hasn't done anything wrong yet, so we can't claim any advantage, but we can claim that it will be a fun game. ED6 is the more traditional and more balanced move, uh, probably the most popular as well. Um, the um, the strategy for black is much the same, uh, just slightly different, uh, slightly different setup for black. We we castle short immediately, and we we put our bishop on g4 if we are able to. Sometimes uh, white plays a different uh, uh, variation here, plays something like bishop d3 and knight e2, just to rule out this slightly annoying pin on on g4. Uh, there are ways to counter this as well, though. But I'm going to show you the the most normal setup for white, which is this. Bishop g4 castles, knight c6. This is black standard setup in the Alekin's defend, uh, defense exchange variation, just to put pressure on these two pawns. Now, if uh, white is not careful, then of course we'll enjoy a, uh, a pawn on d4, uh, which will be uh, which would be great for us, uh, of course, unless um, white has this trick, uh, queen e4. 
So um, just recommend not to not to be too greedy too early in the opening here because as you can see there are two threats here the knight and there's a mate on h7 as well so don't fall for, fall for this uh, immediately at least. Uh, after h3 we could just uh, retreat with the bishop to um, to g6 and and exchange these bishops which uh, again would be okay for us because black's position is uh, slightly cramped in the Alekin's defense so any exchange of minor pieces and pawns is is okay for us it frees up the rest of our game and the rest of our pieces just gives us more space basically so this would be fine uh, bishop b3 which covering on d4 uh, is probably um, better bishop f6 b3 and of course we could take on um, on d4 here, but white has this trick, uh, bishop h7, and instead of playing queen d4 uh, now, which allows a, another exchange, which of course would leave black reasonably happy, then uh, white can play queen uh, d3, king g8, and recapture with the knight, and this is um, better for white because this bishop uh, on g4 suddenly is a bit offside, a bit misplaced, nowhere to go really, just uh, go back to d7 maybe or around to g6, but um, the, the white knights, especially the one on d4, is very strong, so this is not recommendable. Um, you could play this, but uh, there are uh, better, better variations available for you. Of course, I can just mention briefly that uh, after h3, you could take on f, uh, f3 and play bishop f6, which would be okay. Uh, of course, hoping for a concession for, from, from white here. Um, here, in this scenario, we would have great control over the black squares in the center. This pawn would be slightly weak, and we will follow up with g6, for example, rook e8, g6, just to um, paralyze the, the bishop on, uh, on the light squares for, for white, and uh, just uh, reduce the scope of this bishop. And uh, continue to play on the the dark squares, and maybe a5 to uh, to take some squares on the uh, queen side and reroute our knight to c5, and suddenly it looks very harmonious for black. So this is uh, much like a dream scenario in the Alekins, actually. Uh, but of course, uh, instead of uh, playing this uh, concession d5, uh, bishop b3, and it's the same trick, you know, with queen e4 at the end of everything. So um, the pawn is. Um, protected for now. Could play g6 here and force white to make uh, a decision regarding that pawn, but but still, uh, the, the game goes on and uh, I was just trying to show you black strategy here, which is to uh, attack your opponent's center and of course play on the dark squares um, preferably. That's the exchange variation for you. Uh, that leaves us with one variation which is the modern um, variation, the modern uh, move knight f3 just uh, protecting both of these central pawns without making any real decision regarding this this knight on, on the uh, d5. So there are several moves available for us now. I'm just going to show you uh, a, a trick that's, uh, well, I'm not going to say normal or um, or, um, or, or uh, very easy to spot, but uh, it's definitely something you should be... Um, um, Made um, made attentive to this is the the trick knight takes f7 after knight d7 of course trying to um, force an exchange of knights uh, on on e5 which would be uh, great for us in a slightly cramped opening exchanging pieces always um, good when you lack some space but um, here knight f7 forces our king. Uh, out and about, and after king e6, there are many moves available for white. You could play c4 right away. I, I like this move g, uh, g3. Um, trying to chase the queen now, but ended up with the king on c6. Of course, we have a piece, a piece extra, but uh, but after these moves, I mean, it's pretty obvious that um, white will uh, will have the advantage um, because of this very. Um, airy king on c6. Don't fall for this uh, trick, guys. Instead of uh, playing knight d7 right away, you can play c6. You could also play g6, would be uh, my recommendation. Uh, Fianchettoing the bishop to g7, and after something like bishop c4, then, then c6 could be played. You could also play bishop e6 uh, here, and um, 
develop much like this again uh, if white allows an exchange of knights then this position will be uh, pretty okay for for black i think um could go for something else then queen takes d7 as well but um, this looks uh, reasonable uh, and uh, after something like uh, let's say rook e1 here you can uh, gain some space with a5 you could castle king side and then try to play on the queen side um knight c7 again tempting uh, white to go for an exchange and eventually breaking up with e5 or c5 is your long-term strategy in this kind of position so this should be pretty okay and if knight f3 then you'll continue with b5 just trying to discourage c4 from white so this will be keep your uh, knight um, safe on d5 and eventually retreating knight c7 and putting your bishop on a dominant square like d5 uh, encouraging white to exchange and uh, we will have a very solid position which is difficult to break down for white and there are not many uh, pawn breaks for black here but again we see that e5 and c5 are the uh, obvious pawn breaks if you're looking for that kind of action later on so that's one variation in the uh, modern um, modern style like in defense you could also go for g6 right away um, i'm just going to mention that bishop g4 is the most normal move and uh, that often entails development much like this uh, eventually you'll take on d5 uh, you can play c5 for example but uh, very often you'd like to wait as long as you can just to uh, encourage white to, to take on d6 but then you can take back with the pawn for example uh, you can't take with the bishop because there will be a fork losing a piece that's no good so c takes d6 is forced but in a position like this for example um, you have uh, pretty much uh, achieved uh, what uh, you were looking for um, in the first place uh, by playing the Alekin's defense. You have exchanged a piece uh, and uh, you can play on the dark squares in the center, uh, add some pressure on the C4 pawn as well. So this uh, position uh, is slightly better for white after something like bishop g4, but uh, it's definitely playable for black and in a practical game these knights will be very tricky indeed. So. Um, that's definitely something you can uh, you can consider, but um, I would recommend playing uh, g6 in this position and develop much like this. And you can just continue with castles and start to play in the center, adding pressure against these central pawns. So that's basically what I'm going to cover in the Alekin's defense. Uh, it starts with the moves e4, knight f6, and there are many variations that I did not cover in this video, but I'm hoping this will be a good introduction to the opening, and best of luck to you in your practical uh, games.